Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including Cybertruck in New Zealand, another round of huge Tesla incentives at the end of the quarter, new Model 3 leaks and more, so let's get into it. And a special thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. First up today, Mercedes-Benz is reportedly considering adopting Tesla's North American charging standard. NACS seems to be living up to its name, as we're seeing more automakers accept it as a standard. In the past few weeks, we've seen Ford and General Motors choosing to adopt Tesla's NACS connector for their vehicles beginning in 2025. Then other fast charging manufacturers have followed their lead like Blink and ChargePoint. That's great news for owners of non-Tesla EVs, because many third-party fast chargers are largely unreliable. Converting to a more reliable standard could mean a better charging experience for all EV drivers. Stellantis, parent company of Chrysler, Dodge, Fiat, and Ram, among others, has also considered making the switch. Now Mercedes appears to be joining the list of supporters, which Elon is calling the NACS Coalition. According to a new report, they're evaluating a technical implementation of the connector, which would allow their vehicles to connect to Tesla superchargers. All of this aligns with Tesla's mission to, quote, accelerate the transition to sustainable energy, because that includes improving all EVs regardless of the company. Company, but it's also good for business. They're the operator of the most reliable and available fast charging network in the country, and maybe even the world, with over 45,000 stations worldwide. That advantage has not been unseen for other fast charger manufacturers who have struggled to keep up, and the EV makers that rely on these networks. It's actually gotten to a point where it looks like any EV that depends on a charging network outside of Tesla's will be at an absolute disadvantage moving forward. I've had less than ideal experiences with my Rivian R1T and the Mercedes EQS now, so this is definitely a welcome change. Amid this influx of support for NACS though, Tesla has raised the price of their at-home wall connector. Last year, this charger was $500 and offering up to 11.5 kilowatts or 48 amps of output, and that was a pretty good deal. Then in December, Tesla dropped the price of this charger down to $350. A little over a month later, they raised it back up to $425. Now they've raised it another $50 to $475. Tesla has a reputation for pricing their products in accordance with the market, but we usually talk about this happening with their EVs, especially after huge price cuts. Now we're seeing the same thing with their chargers. With this widespread adoption comes an increase in popularity that they'll have to prepare for, so it follows that they would have to increase the price of this charger. They also can do so. For the future, they not only have to supply Tesla drivers, but now some Ford, GM, and maybe Mercedes drivers as well. The timing of this does seem a little suspicious, but it's still a great option for many customers. That said, this charger doesn't seem to have changed at all in recent years, so some customers customers may be disappointed by this price increase. This price increase is good news for Tesla's competition in the charging station manufacturing space because those companies' higher priced options are now more competitive. Next up today, Tesla is offering another huge discount on the Model S and X as we approach the end of the quarter. If you're in the market for one, it could be a great time to buy. Tesla has clearly been doing a lot to push sales of these cars, including a number of large price decreases over the last few months. More recently, they've added in a supercharger incentive. For any customers buying a new Model S or X, you'll get three years of free supercharging. Especially for those driving a lot and needing to charge on the road, this could be a huge money savings. Then, for those trading in a Model S or X that had unlimited free supercharging when Tesla was offering it, they increased that incentive to six years of free charging. Additionally, if you purchase a Model S or X using a referral code, like mine in the description below, you will receive 1,000 off on the purchase and three free months of the FSD package. Those referring get 20,000 referral points compared with the usual 2,000. So Tesla has really been pulling out all incentives possible short of a price decrease until now. Now on top of all of those, Tesla is offering huge discounts for cars in inventory. We've seen them do this with other vehicles, sometimes offering a maximum of $3,000 off, but for these pricey cars, Cars, they're offering discounts up to $8,000. That's a discount for buying it in inventory and getting these vehicles off of Tesla's hands. Here we can see an inventory Model S that would normally cost $96,490, coming in at $88,260. It's a demo vehicle, so that is a consideration, but $8,000 is a lot. Similarly, for the Model X, here's a demo vehicle normally priced at $103,740, going for $94,050. It's not only demo vehicles, though. With this non-demo Model X, 
index coming in $7,500 under normal price. It also completely correlates with how Tesla's inventory is going. We've seen lots of Model 3 incentives since their inventory there in red has continued growing. For the Model S and X, in green and yellow respectively, they are now trying to keep those numbers dropping. We see this happen regularly as Tesla approaches the end of the quarter, but this time they're bigger incentives than before. My guess is that Tesla is having trouble selling the Model S and X due to how much the Model 3 and Y offer for a cheaper price. On top of that, the Model 3 is about to be refreshed and most customers seem to know about it by now. It's always interesting to see Tesla adapt pricing and incentives at the end of the quarter because it clearly shows each area that they may be having a demand issue even if it only lasts for a couple weeks. It's becoming more and more common that if this car has been out for quite a bit, the end of the quarter may be worth waiting for. Three years of supercharging and a discount up to $8,000 is significant. On top of that, if you refer someone to buy a Model S or X, you'll get 20,000 referral points, which is 10 times more than Tesla offers for the Model 3 or Y. And as I mentioned, as a buyer, you get $1,000 off and three months of FSD. It seems that that discount likely can't be stacked with a discounted inventory demo car, but it's unclear. Either way you swing it, there are great incentives for these cars as we approach the end of the quarter, and with around 10 days to go, we could see Tesla push discounts or incentives even more. Next up today, we have a new Project Highland Model 3 leak that confirms the rumors we've seen thus far. So far, we've seen quite a bit of the leaked Model 3, including updated interior, stockless steering wheel like the Model S, and an updated front end. That front end was also confirmed in another siding by the kilowatts where the cover slipped a tad. The rear of the Model 3 has been covered up in all sidings though, so the best look we've gotten was this illustration of how the trunk itself will look. That taillight design is much thinner, so renders of the car have imagined it looking something like this. It looks like the final design may not be as pointed as this render shows, but now we have what appears to be confirmation that this is the change coming for this car. A Project Highland Model 3 was spotted testing on the road, this time in white, and the cover was dislodged just enough in the back that we can see the new taillight design. When zooming in closely, we can see the white body of the Model 3 taking over right where the taillight ends. This is a big change from the current Model 3 taillight, aligns with leaks showing that the blinker is now vertical here, and aligns with the general idea of renders that we see here. It also makes a lot of sense why Tesla is covering up all areas except this small portion that is is hard to tell apart from a current Model 3. Clearly, the refreshed Model 3 is coming soon. My prediction is that Tesla will launch it at their next earnings call with an updated website instead of having some sort of official launch event. It'll be interesting to see how they handle growing inventory as we approach the end of the quarter, though. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more incentives on top of the three months of supercharging that they're offering today. After all the stress the last few years have brought with shortages, crises, price cuts, and more, Tesla stock appears to be doing well once again, closing well over $220 recently. It's especially impressive given that it's one of seven companies driving the S&P 500. While Tesla's stock can be exciting, there are other ways you may want to diversify, especially with the state of the market as a whole right now. Many, including Goldman Sachs, are shifting their strategy. A Bloomberg survey recently found that they are shifting from heavy stock and real estate allocations to to, quote, safe haven assets. Another area of interest is collectibles with the greatest allocation to art and more. That could explain last fall's booming auction season, which was the richest art auction season in history. Many are shifting with the help of today's sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks allows almost anyone to invest in blue chip contemporary art without needing to spend millions. Over 730,000 people have signed up so far, and with their popularity, there may be a wait list, but you can skip the line by clicking the link Link in the description below. Check them out. For the Cybertruck, we have a small update. Recently, we have seen Tesla testing the Cybertruck prototype with a new camo wrap. That has led many to wonder if they're sincerely trying to disguise this oddly shaped truck, or if they're testing out their own in-house wrapping service that they plan to offer. In any case, now the Cybertruck has been spotted in New Zealand. It was spotted at a New Zealand airport, covered up, getting ready for winter testing. Tesla typically uses New Zealand for winter testing as the release of a new vehicle nears, so this is a good sign for the Cybertruck timeline. They usually wouldn't be at this stage unless they were nearly ready to go with this prototype. Hopefully this goes well and the Cybertruck remains on track to have release candidates by August. Next up today, Tesla seems to be moving forward with a new technology that they're developing for their steering systems. In 2020, Tesla put together several projects in Austin that were separate from their Giga Texas factory. One of those project teams had the goal of developing a new steer by wire system, and it was reported that they were still working on it in 2021, but the technology was still years away from being viable. Now 
now they've officially filed for a patent for the system. In the patent's abstract, they say, a vehicle steering system by wire to control the lateral motion of the vehicle is provided. The system includes a steering wheel torque feedback actuator assembly with two controllers, a front road wheel steering actuator assembly with two zonally isolated motors and controllers, two separate power assemblies, two separate vehicle communication networks in separate wiring bundle assemblies, and three private system communication networks between each node in the steering system. In this drawing from the patent application, you can see the steering wheel is connected to a sensor, which is connected to the rest of the system. Basically, the objective of this system is to eliminate mechanical linkages in the steering system and rely on electrical or electromechanical systems for steering instead. Tesla and other automakers have already implemented similar systems as part of their self-driving features, like autopilot and FSD, but they still have a mechanical link to their steering systems. One concern with implementing this tech in the steering system itself is that the electrical system could be prone to faults. If your autopilot stops working, you can just take over manually, but if your steering system goes out, that poses a serious risk. For that reason, many regions still require the steering systems of registered vehicles to be mechanical. Tesla calms this concern though, going on to say the redundant components are zonally isolated such that common cause of faults do not endanger the system when one or more of the components fails. This system has the potential to be more efficient and offer better steering while allowing Tesla or anyone else who uses this tech more flexibility in the way they design a car's cockpit. For now though, it's not totally legal everywhere, so that will be an obstacle once this tech is ready. If this sentence does become electric, that could mean that in the future, Tesla will be able to improve steering with over-the-air software updates just like their autopilot system. That poses its own set of concerns, as not all updates have actually been improvements, but as we've seen in the past, Tesla is quick to rectify any mistakes they make. Overall, I'm excited to see this technology come to market through Tesla because it opens doors for new designs and better efficiency in the future. Next up today, Tesla has reached a new milestone with their Powerwall deployment and VPP program. They've installed 500,000 Powerwalls worldwide, and that number is growing fast. Home battery packs are becoming more popular every year, and Tesla has a lot of competition in this sector, but they still own a large share of the market. Tesla first introduced their first home battery in 2015, but sales didn't pick up until 2016 when they introduced the Powerwall 2. In 2020, four years later, they announced that they'd installed 100,000 units. Then they doubled that in 2021. As with any other product, ramping is the hardest part for any company, so it's no surprise that now that Tesla has overcome their initial ramp, we're going to see a lot more Powerwalls. They made an announcement via Twitter that oddly enough has actually been deleted, and it said, just passed 500,000 Powerwall installs globally. Install before 1031 and get a $500 rebate per Powerwall in the US and eligible US territories. They've also included a link to learn more about that rebate, which is still on their Powerwall website. Recently, Tesla has reportedly been powering with more third-party installers to install these Powerwalls, in addition to their own increased production. According to Electrek, if they didn't have to worry about battery supply constraints, Constraints, they would be able to produce about 250,000 Powerwalls in about a year and a half. At the same time, Tesla has announced the Powerwall 3, which will offer up to 11.5 kilowatts of power output, which is at least a 20% increase from the Powerwall Plus that they currently offer. That one is expected to officially launch this summer. Tesla has also confirmed a new virtual power plant in Puerto Rico that'll be launching soon and some updates for VPPs in Texas. These are markets where the Powerwall is already popular and we've heard about the success of VPPs in Dallas and Houston, where each connected home can theoretically provide power for themselves as well as an additional unconnected at home. In Puerto Rico, their electric grid was badly affected by a hurricane back in 2017, and Tesla devoted a lot of energy to supply the island with power walls. Now, a recent heat wave has caused many outages there after the grid couldn't keep up with demand. That's exactly the kind of situation a VPP can help protect against, so this is perfect timing for that network to open. Drew Baglino posted that Tesla has over 350 megawatts of power walls in Puerto Rico that could help the grid shortage in Puerto Rico overnight. We are working with Luma Energy Puerto Rico to activate a VPP for all Powerwall customers this summer. Stay tuned for more. Last year, it was reported that Powerwalls kept the lights on for 44,000 homes during an outage, so once the VPP opens, that number should be at least doubled. As for Texas, he said, quote, coming to Texas Tesla Electric customers soon. We are testing the initial set of VPP services with the Electric Reliability Council of Texas this month and target paying out the first VPP credits to Powerwall customers in Tesla Electric next month. Texas is an important market for Tesla's energy division as they're an approved electricity retailer there. We 
can expect to see a lot of new energy products being introduced there as Tesla energy continues to grow. Next up today, Tesla has reached another milestone for 4680 battery ramping at Giga Texas. They've recently confirmed that they've produced 10 million cells at the plant, three years after unveiling them at Battery Day in 2020. They've been using these batteries in the all-wheel drive Model Y manufactured in Texas for about a year now, and this is pretty much the first update we've had from Tesla since they announced they would be aiming to begin production of 4680 cells in Q3 2022. They said, produced our 10 millionth 4680 cell at Giga Texas this week and included their signature team photo. That's enough cells to build around 12,000 Model Ys. They're also ramping production outside of Texas, having recently leased a 210,000 plus square foot facility that'll be used for 4680 manufacturing earlier this month. That facility is just three miles from their Fremont factory and across the street from their Cato Road facility where they first started producing the 4680 cell. This new facility will be very important for Tesla when it comes to battery ramping, so I'm excited to see this develop. Tesla doesn't use usually lease properties owned by other companies, so it looks like they're doing everything they can to get these new batteries out there, even if that means changing their strategy a little bit. Regardless, it's great that Tesla has been able to ramp these cells, as battery constraints have been an issue in EV ramping industry-wide for years. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Over at Rivian, sources speaking with Electric have said that they are planning to acquire a better route planner. ABRP, for short, is a Swedish company that is one of the most popular EV route planning services. It's a small piece of news but could be big for the future of Rivian software. They currently use Mapbox and charge routing is limited in its effectiveness, especially with third-party charging networks. A better route planner would likely improve under Rivian and be integrated well to create a great experience for drivers routing on a road trip. Over at Stellantis, they are planning to ship a new EV in 2024 with a starting price around $27,000. It's a new Citroen car called the EC3, will get 186 miles of range, and will be competing with a few other low-priced EVs imported to Europe from China. Affordable EVs are arriving much quicker in other regions, so it's exciting to see this one come to market. For now, we're still expecting it to be a while before we see this or one like it in the US, and Tesla's affordable EV may be the first one we really see in the US. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see my full review of the Mercedes EQS, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.